One of the great excitements of science to me is seeing how different levels in the hierarchy of science are explanatory and consistent with, uh, within, at their own level. And then when they jump up a level, the properties and characteristics of what we find are, to us at least, almost incomprehensibly different. I mean, the simple one is you, you put the hydrogen gas and oxygen gas, you somehow mix them together in a one to two ratio, and you get the properties of water and then ice and all sorts of things. And then, of course, at each level, the same thing. How, do, how does, we call this emergence, how, how does this happen? How does a biologist see the concept of emergence? You've been a quantum physicist, you've been a physical chemist, and you've been, so you, you've existed at different levels mm. of, of scientific uh, explanation. How does it work? It's an interesting question, and frankly, I don't think it's one that biologists pay much attention to, at least not in my field of genetics, but we should. I mean, after all, are we not the ultimate in what you're describing as far as looking at something that seems very simple, a one-dimensional script of DNA with a series of three billion letters that defines the human genome, and yet which somehow is capable of providing the instructions for this incredible process of going from being a single cell to a very elaborate organism with a nervous system that just absolutely defies our ability to understand, in fact, which some people think we'll never be able to understand. Mm -hmm. Will our own mind be able to understand our mind? Mm -hmm. And that is a fascinating feature of how you take one-dimensional information and create four-dimensional complexity of this sort in an emergent kind of way. I think for a biologist to try to even think about that is so hard <laughs> that we break it down into very tiny little steps. Okay all right, how does this stretch of DNA specify a particular protein? Okay, what do we think that protein does? What is its shape and where does it fit into the cell? Ultimately, we're gonna have to face the problem <laughs> that getting to where we wanna get to, which is a complete understanding of the function of an organism, even a simple one, uh, may not be a pathway that we're fully on and we may not get there without stepping back from this reductionist step-by-step -step mode and really considering this concept of emergence in its full-blown form. But I think you'll find very few biologists mm -hmm. who are willing to even try to think about that right now. It's just too hard. If you would project 100,000 years into the future, ah. a million years, do you think that a reductionist analysis, purely scientific, will be able to explain physical reality from the quantum le level to the organism level. T take it as far in the future as you want to go. I do think a lot of us think about those things, Robert, and uh, I think most scientists, being the materialists that they are, would argue we ought to be able to do that, at least for a simple organism. And one of our specific goals right now, maybe in 50 years, uh, in the genome effort, is to try to have a computer model of a simple cell that would incorporate all of the components mm. uh, right down to the atoms that are involved in that oh. and the kinetics of their interactions, oh. not just a static picture, but a dynamic oh. one, and could make predictions that would be validatable. At the of, atomic level? Uh, well, ultimately, yes. Wow. I mean, we would probably be able to ratchet this up and down, and what you'd want to be able to do is to both say what happened to these particular atoms in that moment where you added this compound to that cell, Maybe from a medical perspective, we wouldn't go there all that often, but if the model's gonna be right at a certain level, it has to incorporate that information. Um, that's clearly a reductionist point of view. That's very reductionist, and right now we're just thinking about maybe we could understand a single E. coli bacterium in that way. Could we understand ourselves in that way? Uh, that breaks uh, all of my ability to think uh, clearly because I, I do have this issue about whether we will ever understand our own minds, whether we have the capability of our mind being able to understand our mind. And as a believer, I have to say, there's a part of me that thinks there's this spiritual aspect of who we are that will not be susceptible to that reductionist view and that will always be out of reach.